So now we're going to talk about meiosis. All right. Meiosis uh, will occur actually in two different divisions, and and being the the, the really uh, imaginative folks that we are in naming things, uh, it occurs in meiosis one and meiosis two. Okay. All right. And before the cell undergoes meiosis, it goes undergoes interphase, just like we would think of other cells, right? All cells will be in interphase. And remember that that parent cell or the diploid cell will undergo uh, S subphase and interphase, which replication occurs, so that there are duplicates or replicates of the DNA. Remember that you have two, two uh, DNA molecules, they're the same, and they're held together by a little cytoskeletal material called the centromere. All right? Before S subphase, you just had this one DNA molecule. All right? This is called a replicated chromosome. And this is for the fact, this is because I'm going to have to have um, duplicates of the DNA when we make these divisions. Okay. So that all the resulting cells will have the right amount of DNA and stuff. Right? So this is, this is what happens really in all cells. Mitosis, meiosis. It, it, it's the same. Okay. <coughs> A little, a little small there. It needs to be a little bit different uh, contrast too, if you like. But so, once interphase is ending and uh, we start my meiosis, meiosis one, we go to prophase one. Okay. So it'll go through prophase, metaphase, antiphase, telophase, just like in mitosis. Okay. And similar things happen. All right. The nuclear envelope starts to disappear in prophase one. All right. Just like in mitosis. Okay. The chromosomes condense. You can start seeing them if you look at a slide underneath the microscope. You can see them. Okay. They thicken up. Then the centrioles, those little cytoskeletal materials, the pair, they move to opposite ends of the cell, just like in prophase and mitosis. All right? So all of that's the same. Okay? The next two are sort of where there is a... Uh, and the spindle fiber, spindle apparatus, spindle fibers, they start to form. Okay? And we have to. But in prophase one, of meiosis, instead of the of the chromosomes sort of just willy-nilly being uh, located within the area, what will happen is that the homolog, okay, the chromosome that has the same shape and length, they, they buddy up, all right? They get close to each other. Call it pairing up, okay? Let's make one more. We'll make another one. Alright. Still, we have the centrioles moving to the poles. We have the spindle fibers attaching to the chromosomes, right? And we have 
some of the spindle fibers attach to each other, just like in prophase. Okay, so the biggest difference is that these pairs, these homologs, are pairing up. They're getting, they, they get close to each other, right? So, in, on your exam, I would concentrate on this particular phase as something that's a different than, than something that you saw in mitosis, all right? Because in mitosis, you know, the, the chromosomes were sort of just willy-nilly, all right? But in meiosis, it's important that those homologs pair up. Right? And so if you have these, these homologs paired up, this is not very human. Alright. And they have the same genes, right? So if for instance, this part of the arm of, of the pink one comes in contact with the arm of the blue one, like that. While they're paired up in prophase one, they can actually switch arms. And that is called crossing over. So these are two things that happen in prophase one that do not happen in mitosis prophase. Okay. This is prophase of mitosis. All right. Any questions about that? So you have crossing over when those homologs are uh, paired up. And so let's say uh, we're going to see that these get divided up into gametes, okay? But you can see if, if uh, tongue rolling was here, okay, and the, the blue arm can roll their tongue, and the pink arm can't roll their tongue, all right, you can see now that the blue, the blue chromosome cannot roll their tongue now, and the pink can, all right? Whereas before, it was the other way around, okay? So, so crossing over allows for some genetic differences in the expressions of traits, okay? All right, so that's that's one way, you know, things can happen that you wouldn't normally uh, expect. All right, may not expect. Any questions about prophase one? And then in metaphase one, it's really uh, oh, okay. There's. This is depicting the chromosomes, and they're, the homologs are paired together, paired up, right? We'll, we're going to look at uh, cellsalive.com here after we finish, and we'll go, we'll, it'll show you sort of movement of the cell, how, how these things happen from one, from one phase to the next. Metaphase is just a little different, all right? In metaphase one, of meiosis one, those homologs are paired up. I'm going to make them red instead of pink. Because I would let my pink over there. All right? Instead of metaphase, 
of mitosis, remember, they were single file along the this center portion of the cell called the metaphase plate. In metaphase one, the homologs pair up and are moved to the center of the, of the cell along the metaphase plate. In a nutshell, that's really the differences between meiosis and mitosis, all right? Because the second, the second division of meiosis is exactly like mitosis, okay? But in metaphase one, the spindle fibers push the chromosomes to the middle of the plate called the metaphase plate, middle of the cell. But instead of single file rank, the homologs are pushed to the center. And that structure, the two homologs together in the metaphase plate is called a tetrad. How many is tetra? Four, right? All right. Tetra means four. Okay. And when when you are trying to make a slide of a cell in meiosis, a lot of times you may, you may not get the center of the cell sideways, okay? And so you'll cut through it. Maybe you cut through it like this, okay? And when you do, what you see are the spindle fibers around it. And then you'll see dots. You'll have this thing, and you'll have these dots. Right? Those dots are really just the ends of these th uh, homologs, right? There's four of them. So when they cut through it, sometimes they just they, they cut it like that, and you'll, all you'll see are those, the ends of those homologs. So, so this particular structure here is called a tetrad. Right? Tetra means four because there are four dots. Right? Uh, crossing over has since ended. It may go into metaphase one a little bit, but by the end of metaphase one, it's, it's stopped. So those are the two major differences of meiosis one in those two phases, all right, then mitosis, all right? Any questions? Because we're, once we hit meiosis two, we're going to move a little bit quicker because it, we've done it, all right? All right, so the next phase would be anaphase, right? Met pro, meta, ana. All right, oh, I'm sorry. So here, the homologs are, are along the metaphase plane, right? All right. Anaphase, remember, in anaphase of mitosis, the cells elongate. There are spindles that are attached from one pole to the next, and of course there are some that are attached to chromosomes. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. 
right? So as the cell, as these spindles that are attached to the spindles on the poles start to elongate, they push against each other, forcing the cell to elongate. And now these little spindles start to contract in the same time. All right, that, so as they are contracting, instead of the, the, the daughter, the uh, sister chromatids being pulled apart, the tetrad becomes pulled apart. So instead of that, we'll have, all right, this situation, all right? This is anaphase one, and I'll show you what, just a reminder, to show you what anaphase and mitosis look like. All right, remember instead of So the, the replicated chromosome was pulled apart, right? And then they moved toward the poles. So here we still have replicated chromosomes moving toward the poles, right? So all this is the same except for the fact that instead of the sister, chromati uh, sister chromatids being pulled apart, the, the tetrad is pulled apart. The, the homologues are pulled apart from 